this little computer here it is my ASI Air astronomy computer that's used to control my entire telescope. This does a lot of things really, really well, but one thing that is often criticized for is its Wi-Fi. People find it to have poor range and to be unstable. And together we are going to try to fix that today. We're going to test a number of different solutions from very, very cheap to overkill to the custom solution and to the downright silly. Hmm. But first, let's do a quick baseline. Here I have connected to the ASI Air. I have my phone right next to it here. And we are quite right now measuring the Wi-Fi strength. Just so you understand here, this scale basically goes from like zero is the max it can read. But normally like minus 50 is considered excellent. Minus 60 is considered okay. Minus 70 is where we get into issues. So we can see right now we have extremely good connection. We are at minus 26 right now as I'm recording this. But I'm going to start walking in that direction. And then we're going to see how far we can get before we begin getting into trouble. I didn't have to walk that far and we're actually now down to around the minus 50. It's bouncing up and down between minus 50, minus 55 sometimes, but I don't know. I'm going to guess like four meters, five maybe, something like that. That <laughs> wasn't very far. We're going to keep going and we're going to see how far we get before we get into, uh, into Wi-Fi issues. Hmm, okay, so it's kind of all over the place right now. Um, it's sitting sometimes now where it's minus 65. Now it's minus 62. Sometimes it drops down to like minus, uh, minus 70, but I've seen also peak up to like minus 55. So it's really unstable at these kind of ranges here, but it's, it's like falling in and out. So I'm going to call this the, um, the acceptable range for our first test. First test is going to be tinfoil. This is good for many things, primarily making hats, but we're going to try to see if we can make some kind of like directional antenna kind of thing so we can put that around the existing antenna and have that push the wi-fi signal further in the direction we want it to and then shield it from other directions i don't know if this is going to work but let's give it a go okay, so we are just gonna take a bit of tin foil here and fold it up sorry for the audio this is going to sound terrible and then my idea was just you know kind of like I don't know, like fold it around a, a water bottle like so. And I know this should be a parabola and not a half circle. Realistically, I don't give this very good chances. So now I'm going to put this up around my Wi-Fi antenna. Something like that. Make sure it's nice and open in the direction we, uh, we want the signal. And I just want to run a very quick test here. I should probably say that I know nothing about these kind of things, so I'm just basically making things up as we go and trying different things and see if it works. We're back where we were before, and signal-wise, I don't know, it's minus 60 now. I actually think there is a slight improvement, not necessarily in the signal strength, but I noticed that it fluctuates a lot less than it did before. As I said before, it would sometimes dip down to minus 70, sometimes it would go up to like minus 55. But right now it's hovering, it's very stable around minus 60. That's kind of working a little bit. Not by much, but for just taking tin foil, that's actually kind of impressive. I'm going to go a little further and see how far we can get. Honestly, this is kind of impressive. I've just been walking and as you can see on the graph here, there's been very little degradation in the signal. It just hovers around those minus 60. I mean, surely there's no way that a little bit of tin foil is going to be enough. Oh, here we go. Hold on. Hold on. Hold your horses. Now the signal is dropping. Yeah, okay. I think this is as far as we're going to get. We're down to minus 70 now. Okay, but that's actually a decent improvement. Like before, I was just on the other side of this little like uh, cross here. So we got a bit of extra distance out of this. Okay, so tin foil, does it work? Yeah, kind of. So now we're getting over to something a little bit more purpose built. This antenna is like it's it's designed for Wi-Fi range signal. It's specifically listed the 2.4 gigahertz band as one that it performs very well in. And I thought, you know, this is one of those you know with magnets and it like sticks on I don't know a car or whatever. 
And the reason I got this was simply just the, you know, more bigger, more better kind of mentality. So I'm going to try to take that off and then put this one on here instead. Okay, we are connected again. I'm sitting at around minus 30, minus 35, hovering around that area. Not actually as good as with the stock antenna, but I don't know, maybe it just lasts better for range. So um, let's go for a walk again. Minus 75.2 again. It's bouncing all over the place again. So we are back to that very erratic, very unstable signal. And again, minus 70 is where we're definitely going to begin to see some dropouts in... Um, in signal, especially if you're trying to transfer pictures over to your phone. So I'm gonna call this a fail. This is actually performing worse <laughs> than it did with the uh, with the stock antenna. And it, so far, the tinfoil has been the best solution. That being said, first of all, I don't think it's necessarily intended for this specific application, but I can still see situations where a product like this can be handy, simply because of that cable. So if, for instance, you have your telescope and there's something blocking your line of sight, if you can get this cable over a wall, through a window, or anything like that, so it basically goes on the other side of whatever is blocking it, then I could see something like this actually being handy. And because something like this is also weatherproof, you can keep it outside and um, just connect it up whenever you're out with your telescope. So yeah, I can still see a situation where something like this might work. But for this, this is not it. The next one here is a, this is a device from Vonnet. It's a high performance Wi-Fi repeater slash bridge. This is, I don't think it's necessarily purpose built for the ASI Air, but it is excellent for it. What this is, is just a small little, basically Wi-Fi thing and it's just a box. It has a bell jack that we can connect in here on the side of the ASI Air. And then it has a Ethernet jack that we connect into it on the Ethernet jack, like so. And now if I go in and actually turn on the, uh, the power for this thing, this should now open up its own Wi-Fi. And we can then try to connect to this. And it claims, right here in the manual, it claims that it can get up to 250 to 300 meters of range. Now, we're gonna put that to the test and see if that's true. But first of all, I need to figure out how this thing works. Setup was actually relatively quickly. The quick start guide was very easy to follow. And look at this, this is promising. Now we can actually see both the ASI Air in green and we can see the new, this one, which is called the ASI Air, this is the 2G F6, whatever thing. And look at that, we are at minus 17 dB. That's the best we have seen so far. It's basically just maxing out the graph here. Of course, I'm standing right next to it, but we can clearly see we get a stronger signal from this than we do from the default, just standing next to it. So there is actually some promise here. Let's, um, let's go for a walk again, and uh, let's see if we can, uh, we can keep that signal swing off up over range. So I'm now back at the point where the tinfoil test began to, uh, to break down. And we can see here the green, we're sitting down at minus 70, that's where we get into trouble. But now we're sitting at minus uh, 60. Remember, that's still like 10 dB is a lot. And that means we are now up in acceptable range rather than it actually being, um, being down at minus 70 where we would see connection issues. So um, we're going to walk further and see how far we can get before this thing drops out. We're back into the same behavior as we saw before with it being a bit unstable and kind of bouncing up all over the place. Um, sometimes we get up to minus 60, sometimes we drop down to minus 70. But before we were at the end of that building over there with the normal Wi-Fi, but with this, we actually managed to get quite a bit further than that. I'm actually kind of surprised because I thought with no external antenna, surely we won't be able to reach as far, but clearly, Good hardware also means good range, so, oh yeah, I don't know. I, I do have a link for it in the description. I'm not sponsored or anything, by the way. I bought all the items you see in this video myself. But Okay, let's take this one off again. 
because now we're going to move into the final test of the day. <laughs> Just this. <laughs> I, I don't know if I should have high hopes or low hopes. This is supposed to be a super ultra directional antenna that just beams signals in one very specific direction. Um, got this like off a cheap Chinese website so I have really mixed feelings about this. Either this is going to be absolutely amazing and we just get super super good results. More likely it's more of a gimmick and it doesn't really work at all. All right that will that will have to do. Normally of course if you're actually doing this for, like in an actual deployment you would probably find a better solution than, than that. But for the purpose of this test, this is going to have to do. And I pointed it as good as I could down along the road. We're going to be walking. Um, so let's just, let's just see if we can actually connect to this thing like at all. <laughs> I, I don't know. It is an Astro here. I unfortunately forgot to start the recording on my phone. So there won't be any on-screen live Wi-Fi data for this final test. Well, we are connected. And I'm not really expecting it to be a better signal here up close. But I was hoping that... It's just gonna keep having a strong signal as we move. So once again, I'm gonna get my step counter in today, that's for sure. So we're about to pass the point where the tinfoil kind of broke down. And I mean, it's just been sitting very stable, just apart from when I block the signal with my, if I get it in front of me and block it with my body, then the signal drops. But, but other than that, it's been hovering pretty stable around those like minus 60 for quite some distance here so um i'm gonna keep walking here and see because that is the, the behavior i would expect from a very highly directional antenna that there's not necessarily we get a stronger signal but it just keeps going for longer and that is oh hold on kind of what i'm seeing uh, okay dropped a little way down to minus 65 we're not quite where the the little white walnut box, a walnut uh, like Wi-Fi repeater, how far that got. But let's try to go over there and see if it still has a usable signal. So this is where the walnut, the little walnut. So this is where the Wi-Fi repeater kind of lost the signal. And um, honestly, minus 62. Again, every time I begin walking, it drops because I keep putting it in front of my body here, but. This is, it's low, and it's probably on the edge of what it can do, but I think we can go a little further. Oh, oh, I think, yeah, I think, I think we're done here. Minus, I uh, jumped up there, minus 60. Uh, maybe? No, it drops down again. I think this is about as far as we've got. We got slightly further than we did with that little white uh, Wi-Fi repeater, but just, like, look at this. The car, I don't know if you can even see it anymore. It's down at the end of that. Now for Wi-Fi, that's kind of impressive. These two here almost got the same range. The main difference, of course, is these antenna here, highly directional. This box here, omnidirectional. This sends the signal out in all directions. I think this is my personal favorite as it's small, it fits on the telescope easily. I got a double-sided tape. You can basically stick that on top of your ASIR. It powers everything off the ASIR. It's a nice product. It works really well. While this antenna here get, did give me the best results, it's also a little janky. You need to know exactly the direction you want your Wi-Fi to be beamed. But if you do that, then I actually think this might be a workable solution as well. It's just as simple as just plugging this in and, and trying it out. So basically, we should be able to just plug that in there. It's like really, really heavy. Is that like an 8-inch? This is a 10-inch. 10-inch, okay. Yeah. Wow. 